Alrighty, boys, take four. Um, I just want to start off by saying I know that this is my first time using this recording software, and I know that the webcam is kind of like jumpy, so I'm sorry about that, but we'll power through it. Okay, so Remedies. Remedies is a short story by Callie Fajardo Ansign in the book called Sabrina and Karina, which is a collection of short stories focusing on Latin women. Remedies is about a young girl and mother trying to cure head lice, an infestation caused by their stepbrother. Oh, caused by their stepbrother, which reminds the family of the father that abandoned them. So, the story has like kind of semi-complex characters. So here's a family tree representing all the main characters. Um, the narrator is Clarissa, who is the daughter of Millie and the abandoned father. The father also has a child with another woman whose name is Har er, and the child's name is Harrison. Um, Clarissa is also very close to her great grandmother Estrella, but when I I'm gonna refer to him as refer to her as Grandma Estrella or Estrella as well. So you know that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's like a, a brief overview of the story and the plot. So. As a child, Clarissa lived with her mother, Millie. Clarissa's father was a white man who abandoned them and who also had a white son named Harrison by another woman. Harrison is one year younger than Clarissa, and when they are 10 and 11, Millie begins inviting Harrison over to spend weekends with them. Harrison, who lives in a broken down building with his mother, brings lice into the home. In desperation, Millie and Clarissa visit Grandma Estrella for a cure. As Grandma Estrella successfully prepares the fix and washes both Millie and Clarissa's heads, she convinces Millie to stop picking up Harrison. Grandma Estrella knows that Millie is involving herself in Harrison's life in a silly attempt to draw near to her husband. Millie gives in and Harrison's visits stop. So I'm going to do like a brief overview of, or an overview of the characters just so like for better analysis. So Clarissa, she's the narrator of the story, and she's an 11 year old girl who's described as being short for her age and looking similar to Harrison. So her father's abandonment like takes a big toll on her and she lives alone with her mother. And she kind of resents Harrison because she reminds him of their father and she takes out her feelings on him. And she's been expelled from school because she suffered from head lice four times, um, which was an infection caused by Harrison. And and the school expelled her for like health med like health reasons. So Harrison is the son of Clarissa's father and another woman. Harrison he isn't particularly close to Clarissa, Clarissa with them only being with each other a couple times before the beginning of the story, but. Um, Harrison's mother is described as having problems with drinking and taking pills. Um, this results in what readers can in, what can infer and presume like is a bad environment for Harrison and the narrator's and or at least like what we can infer from the narrator's description of her, of his house, but more on that later. And the environment in which Harrison lives is assumably the reason why he keeps on getting the lice. He lives in a broken down home. Um, so Millie is Clarissa's mother. She's described as wearing lipstick, um, smoking cigarettes, and having a missing tooth. Uh, she speaks Spanish to her daughter and calls her Spanish names like Mija. Um, despite Millie's best efforts, drenching her and her daughter's hair and mayonnaise, using over-the-counter medical shampoo, and going to the hair salon to, cl to cut their hair, she still cannot get rid of the lice. So Estrella is Clarissa's great grandmother. She's described as a short wide woman who likes wearing colorful skirts and she smells of rose oil and air spun face powder. She's extremely knowledgeable of home remedies, knowing how to cure bad breath, get rid of warts overnight, uh, get rid of headaches, stomach aches. She can increase hair growth and cure lice. So she's got a lot going. <laughs> but she really despises Millie's uh, separated partner because they he she abandoned because he abandoned them and because he's white um, Estrella she's kind of got a little like racism thing going on she 
says that she hates half of Clarissa, her great granddaughter, because she's half white, and she says she hates all of Harrison because he's fully white. He has a white dad and a white mom, so that plays in. <laughs> So the conflicts, there are three main conflicts in the story, Clarissa versus Harrison, Clarissa versus herself, and Millie versus Grandma Estrella. So I'm just going to dive into each one of them. So Clarissa versus Harrison, Clarissa has a lot of issues with Harrison, but it mainly stems down to her resentment of him because she reminds him of her father who abandoned her, and Harrison looks like identical to the father at a young age and the and Harrison's mother also reminds her of her father um additionally Harrison infected her four times with lice which resulted in her getting expelled from school and we can see her being rude to Harrison throughout the whole entire story and she kind of makes herself hate every aspect of Harrison. Like when Harrison says he likes Tootsie Rolls, she says yuck to Tootsie Rolls. Um, when Harrison stays at their house, she says that he smells like a litter box. And when they go to Harrison's house, she says that it's disgusting. And I find the conflict super interesting. And it's why I actually chose the story because it makes the narrator unreliable. And because of the conflict, as the reader, you kind of have to think and determine for yourself, are all these things about Harrison true? Or are they just true in the eyes of the young narrator and like just her interpretation because she's telling the story? And here I included an example of an encounter at a hair salon with Clarissa Harrison, the hairdressers. The hairdresser says, are you guys, tw are you guys twins? What do they call that fraternal? referring to their appearance, and the other hairdresser responds, no, that's fraternal, and the other, and she responds back, that's it, you sure do look about the same age. Harrison giggled, I wish we were twins, that'd be cool, and then the resenting Clarissa just responds, he's just my half-brother. I don't want to take up too much time, so you can pause this video and read the second excerpt, but yeah. So now transitioning into like her, her, from her hatred to herself, I'm going to trans, or, oh my God, her hatred towards Harrison. I have to talk about like the self conflict she's having with herself over Harrison. Um, where although Harrison is her half brother, he gives her like too much pain in reminding him of the abandoned father. And she wants to love him and like kind of knows that she should, but alas, she can't bring herself to. And here's a direct excerpt from the story, which kind of explains this perfectly. Um, I felt jealous of that family, their happiness and togetherness. Maybe if I had always known Harrison, we could have been friends, but instead he reminded me of daddy, the only person, oh, I'm, there's a tab opening. <laughs> The only she he reminds me of Daddy, the only person who had ever left me. The family then walked out of sight, and I looked back at the mirror. So this is when she sees like a happy family, um, when she's at a hair salon, and it kind of just explains her feelings towards him pretty explicitly. So here's Millie versus uh, the great grandma Estrella. Um, Millie is. Okay, so Millie is trying to hide the lice from Estrella because she knows what Estrella's light, what Estrella's reaction to the lice from Harrison will be. So she tries to get Clarissa not to contact Estrella, but when the lice situation gets far past out of hand, uh, she she's con she's cornered and has to call her. Or Clarissa is cornered and has to call her great grandmother for help. And Millie's embarrassment when Estrella sees their you know, their head with like sores on it and stuff from the lice is her embarrassment is immeasurable, but she's uh, faced with Estrella's opinions on Harrison and how Estrella hates Millie's ex and hates Harrison because she repre he represents the, the ex that left him. And she, she just, she knows that she can't, that Millie's just involving herself with Harrison that she shouldn't. Um, and so here's an excerpt from, the story of Millie saying, telling Clarissa not to tell Grandma, she, you have lice. So this is 
Clarissa says, why don't we just tell Grandma we have that we have life so she can use one of her home remedies on her. And so Millie says, look at me. She turned her body around and dried the water from my face with the bottom of her t-shirt. You can never tell your grandma, Australia, you have lice. So, you know, she knows what grandma's going to say, and she's just trying to, you know, fend, fend it off. Um, so going into an analysis of the literary devices used in the short story, you can see a mixture of imagery, illusions, irony, foreshadowing, symbols, and vignettes. Um, imagery is seen throughout the story, whether it's describing Harrison's disgusting apartment or describing the process of Millie cleaning the lice out of Clarissa's hair or the description of eating food on Christmas morning. Um, <laughs> allusions are seen and used throughout the story when discussing Harrison's mother's addiction and the burden of Harrison. And dramatic irony is seen as the closer and more effort Millie puts into Harrison um, being closer with Clarissa, the the more and the worse the light the wor the worse and the lice gets and the lice plagues the family. Um, foreshadowing is seen at the beginning of the story where Clarissa talks about the home remedies her great grandmother can do, and I'm pretty sure I have that excerpt in a later slide. So, you know, I'll I'll read that out. <laughs> Um, symbols are used for like more of a deeper meaning in in the remedies and the lice, and the vignettes are used in like like flashbacks of Clarissa spending time with her grandmother watching TV, and there's another flashback of Millie, Clarissa, and the father spending time together on Christmas, and all these literary devices kind of just help paint a picture and help the reader understand the the character dynamics in the story, you know. So transitioning from devices to a more in-depth look, uh, symbols. Symbols are used like, I mean, the whole entire story is exclusively symbols almost, but it they just represent like what's actually going on in the story. So this is my take on it. So the lice, the lice kind of represent the pain of the father's abandonment, which like keeps on affecting them over and over again because of Harrison. Um, you know, the more Harrison, the more the closer they get Harrison in their life, the more um, the more like the pain hurts from the father's abandonment and from and here's the beginning and the end of the lice. So this is when Millie first gets lice, and here's the excerpt. When my face dropped into the sink's chrome basin. Mama raised her hair as her large breasts pressed into my back. Hot water spilled over the front of my Tweety Bird t-shirt, soaking my neck and chest. I whined, fighting back nausea from the egg smell on, on my own head. So that's when she first gets sliced and her mom is putting the, the mayonnaise on her hair and rinsing it out, trying to kill the lice. And then here is Clarissa um, cleaning Harrison's lice. With the with the um, with the remedy that Grandma cooks up, I braced myself, steadying my knees and lifting the pot. My arms tre trembled as I poured the liquid over Harrison's small neck, seeing for the first time how incredibly stabbed and bitten he was. So the symbols really play a large like meaning in the text, and they help under like depict Clarissa's emotions. And, you know, what's actually going on. So, remedies. Remedies are kind of like the harsh reality that everybody's trying to avoid. Um, Millie knows that if she goes to Grandma to, like, finally get rid of the lice, she knows that she'll tell him to stop seeing Harrison. And um, and so, so she's just trying to hold that back. She's trying to fight off the harsh reality. But she knows, you know, she knows what's going to happen. So... I'm not going to read the first excerpt. You can if you want. You can pause it and read it, but I don't want to take up too much time. The second excerpt is actually um, like kind of like an anecdotal thing in the beginning of the um, in the beginning of the story. Um, a dermatologist with a can of liquid nitrogen can remove a wart in four to five seconds. I can remove one overnight with the with the clove of garlic and a band-aid. 
Your fingers will stick for days, but the wart will never come back. You won't have to bite or scratch at it until blood rushes over the spongy lining. You can hold somebody's hand without feeling shame or embarrassment. So, just some additional analysis. See, there's some notable memories I kind of, or notable moments in the story I want to discuss and give attention to. Um, so, the missing tooth. The narrator, Clarissa's mother, Millie, has a missing tooth, and while while she's cleaning Clarissa's hair, she um, Clarissa te- catches a glimpse at the missing tooth. And um, although only one story from the sentence or from the one sentence from the story <laughs> discusses this, I thought it was really interesting because it gives Millie like a lot of character depth and development, and the character the. The missing tooth that she hides gives her character like insecurity and like vulnerability, which gives her character kind of the essence of humanity in the story. Um, like most of the movies or showed or shows I remember watching as a child, like have absent parents. Like for example, the movie Coraline. You know, Coraline like found a portal to another universe and is like making friends and like going on adventures and like fighting like. You know, people from the other universe, but her parents play like an extremely minimalistic role in the story, and they're just like dull characters, and they kind of don't really show like humanity or like the essence of humanity because uh, they're just like it, like uninvolved. And uh, the missing, I thought the missing tooth really gave Millie the character development that connects with the reader. Um, Additionally, the scene. After everybody gets their hair cut, Millie is crying in the bathroom because the lights hurt so much and it won't go away. And, you know, they've tried like three things now, the mayo, the shampoo, and the and the haircut, and it just won't go away. And um, Clarissa gets upset when Harrison tries to comfort her. And I thought that was kind of like Clarissa's remembering her her dad and her mom fighting and her mom crying and so she's kind of like connecting Harrison to her dad and her mom crying and I think this kind of like just further enforces the idea that Harrison reminds Clarissa of her father which is why she despises him so much and lastly um this is while they're getting the haircut um Clarissa is at the hair salon and she sees like a Excuse me. She sees like a joyful family having a good time through the window and she breaks down. She breaks down crying and sobbing. And I think it just shows like how deep her sadness truly is about her father's abandonment and how much it hurt her. So now the style of the story. So I think the style is like super interesting. It focuses on the Latin representation and it's a narrative story with a first person narrator narrator and it's it's really cool because the char- the story gives these super like complex deep characters in just this really simple chronological order story you know there's not like crazy flashbacks there's like two flashbacks and um and you know there's not like a bunch of crazy stuff going on there's just you know the story is like it's not hard to understand, you know what I mean? Um, so, here's my conclusion. Uh, Remedies is a great short story that discusses getting rid of the lice, um, which is the trauma of the family, and it leaves the reader thinking about anything that maybe they've been holding back onto and that they just need to get rid of. So, it kind of leaves the reader with the question, are you holding back on anything? Okay, uh, thank you. Um, wow, 19 minutes. I, wow, you, Mr. Hill, you were right. Um, I, you know, I was sweating 10 minutes and that was, this is double the time. So thank you. Um, I'm going to upload this to YouTube, um, or I'm going to try to. Um, I'm probably going to make it public. So, you know, whatever. But thanks. Um, yeah, I don't. I think I don't know what um, English class I have next year, but you know, I hope it's as good. You know, like I enjoyed as much as I enjoyed your class. So thank you. Have a great summer. 
Um, happy birthday to your kid. And yeah. Bye.